We're going to cover some questions, maybe get some answers out there. We're going to cover some products and some features and some general overalls. So we're going to start this video by talking about the actual condenser microphone I have here with me today. It is from Blast King, and this is a new condenser microphone they have. It's very unique. It's very their own. Uh, instead of going with just a design that's already existing, they went fresh and came out with a very nice product. It is called the Pod C 300. The specifications are absolutely amazing. They give you a nice little sales pitch on the whole thing as well. Uh, I'm going to be using it quite a lot. I enjoy it. It's very responsive. It's very robust in the detail of sound. It comes with its own pop filter in the front of it. It comes with an easy clip on a connection. The whole thing has its own little basket. It's really well done. So we are going to have more on this particular thing in a later video, but I thought I should let you know it also comes in a very nice case. So instead of just a regular cardboard box, you're going to get a nice case with it. So I thought I'd give that a mention because it's definitely worthwhile talking about. So, and also to let you know, uh, normally I always tell you what kind of camera I'm using on stuff like this. This isn't my DSLR anymore. This happens to be a GoPro, which we've been using for, well, almost a year now. Uh, it does great, great indoor video shots. I do use my floodlights off to the side so we can get a lot of light on here. But uh, outside of that, it is wonderful. I own two of them now, and I use one for B-rolls, which is what I originally thought I was buying it for. But amazingly enough, no, I use this as much as possible now. It just makes life a lot easier. So we're going to go through some of the questions. I'll pop up the product over here for you. And the first one is from Next Level Entertainment. And he's talking about getting a speaker for his ceremonies. So this way he has a speaker for his ceremonies and services separate from his main system. And he was asking, what kind of quality range do we get out of the ES15 to goes microphones? Well, that particular speaker especially the microphones they're built for fun and for free uh, i wouldn't use those microphones for a ceremony unless it's your own ceremony and if it doesn't work out that's not a problem nobody paid you to do it um i would put something better on it a nice uhf package would be better you can get them rechargeable now there's lots of options uh, not a big investment the speaker itself is pretty generic again it's a good party speaker for your home your backyard it doesn't have like super bass or all kinds of stuff to it but it does work out really well the rechargeable battery in it, it's just a standard rechargeable they use in all these type of speakers it's about seven and a half amp hours and uh, it runs on 12 volts what most of these manufacturers don't tell you is what the real runtime is. We've tested these speakers out here. If you're running it at 25%, that's where you're going to get that eight hours of playtime out of it. If you turn that volume up to 75%, have an expectation that it's probably more like 90 minutes at best. So it's a good speaker for what it is. You could use it for ceremonies. You're definitely going to want to have that microphone upgraded to a better wireless option. Uh, and... Make sure not to run it on batteries until you're absolutely ready to use it because in that case, it may actually die. Long term though, it will die. These batteries are notorious for getting memory buildup in them and in which case you're going to be spending $20 to $30 to replace it. Uh, you certainly don't want that happening while you're holding an event or you're having a ceremony. So next question is from a Gizmo Chicken. Gizmo's got one of the most popular questions on this channel and it has nothing to do with electronics it has to do with an accessory i use quite often this right here it is the pile pl pts 55 and it is a stand it was originally meant for laptops but we use it here for mixers all the time it just sets up like that and i can even adjust the height of it bring it up higher if i want drop it down lower if i want that's it. That's its purpose in life. So if I had this set up on the table and I wanted to have a mixer nearby, I'd set that up beside me like that. I can then use a reasonably sized mixer like this and put that on there. No problem. Now the newer package ones, it's a bit of an angle. So I tend to want to have it stay up a little bit better, uh, but it still holds up really well. Uh, depends on what shipment you guess I get because uh, sometimes they stand up really well sometimes they come down a little bit I would just probably put a little bit more uh, bumpers underneath the feet in the front to hold it up a little bit more but it does its job and it does its job really well keeps the mixer vertical you can put an 8 channel you can even go as far as 12 I've done that but again that is 
the PLPTS 55. Very cool stand. Built for laptops, but works on mixers, no problem. And of course, we'll have links for this along with all the other speakers. Everything we talk about, we'll link it down below for you. So next question is from Robert and it has to do with Gemini wireless microphones. And he's asking me about the, the four pack. It basically has four. Now these are all preset UHF channels. So if I'm using it somewhere where I don't have any other wireless equipment going on, it's not a bad place to start. The range is really good on it. It's good for any type of church or hall or any situation where you're going to want to mic up to about maybe 65 feet away from the receiver. Uh, remember that's important. You don't want to have the receiver at the back and all your equipment at the front. That's not that kind of powerful. Uh, they are individually channeled. And remember, if you bought another pack, they'd all interfere with each other. So they do have fixed UHF channels and Gemini through their parts department do offer replacements for them. Something better, and Gemini does make this, so does Blast King, it's your choice. We'll put both of them up here. Uh, it's their multi-channel system. So you can use a smart sync connection and get it locked up and they'll be actually paired off and you can rack and stack these all you want. They're probably the most reasonably priced, good quality microphones out there. The Blast King are all built into a metal handle system. Maybe a little bit better, but probably a little bit more expensive. Outside of that, they both offer XLR dual outputs on each one. And you would buy two packs if you wanted four. You'd buy three packs if you wanted six. So that would be definitely a better way to go. And of course, something goes wrong with uh, one of the microphones are replaceable, but also during a use of the product when you're doing it live if you have a failure on the receiver not just the actual wireless microphone you're not losing all four you're just going to lose the two channels that are on that unit remember microphones can transfer from unit to unit by simply pairing them off so you have to have the same brand and model and when you do that you can then use the smart sync and connect any microphone to any box as long as they're well compatible in this case same brand same model so Aaron's asking a question on this particular mixer right here which happens to be the PMX U48 BT and this can I get questions like this all the time and it's asking me if, if this is a powered mixer and uh, no and there's you know if it was powered or if whenever I do do a video on a powered mixer I always say it's a powered mixer and I show you how to hook up paths of speakers to it because that's kind of a big deal um, until you get familiar with pricing, then I'll give you a model for reference sake. If you're looking at, uh, you need to run passive speakers off your mixer, you're going to probably look at something like this, which happens to be a PMX 840BT. Uh, this is an eight channel mixer. It looks completely different, of course, than what you were looking at, but it gives you a better idea. So most of the mixers that we're going out and buying today, the majority of them, which are like this, right? So there is no, these are all preamp mixers. So a mixer like this is gonna be built to go on to either an amplifier, then pass the speakers, or you're gonna be running this on powered speakers. I usually talk about these type of mixers because the majority of the speakers we sell here uh, are of course powered speakers now because they're much more convenient. And here's a question from AVKTV. Now, his question is basically, can he use the live 1202 mixer from Alto as a multi-track mixer? And the answer is no. Uh, usually you're going to see almost a double fold in price. Uh, a good one will probably run you anywhere between 50 to hundred dollars per channel when it's multi-track. So this is an example of a multi-track here and really the multi-track means that you can record each individual line, each individual channel separately on your computer. So that's going to be a bit of a difference. If it's budgetary restraints you have, there are ones from M audio. There's one from Tascam. Those are eight channel dedicated audio interfaces, allowing you to have up to eight channels simultaneously get recorded. Uh, you don't need everything else because it can all be done on your computer. Like I said before, most mixers, are just going to be uh, two channel output because they're assuming you're doing everything pre and the audio interface is built in there is for live. And once you've, you've done all your adjustments on the pre side, you're just basically, they're gonna be recording or broadcasting right off at that point. So no, unfortunately the live 1202 is strictly just a two channel output and two channel input for the USB interface. 
So I've noticed this question a lot, and this question is from Mike, and it has to do with the Elisa Strike Amp 12, their actual powered speaker uh, that a lot of people like to get for their their electric drum sets. Um, sometimes they're looking at it because it's from Elisa's, and they're looking at it to play their backtracks while they're playing their acoustic set of drums. And I'd probably just go out and buy a TS-312 for doing that, or a 310 if you're going to have it right behind your seat. Um, the Elisa's version of the speaker is tuned for their actual drum sets and other companies' drum sets. So if you have one from a different company and you're looking for a speaker that's tuned for playing electric drums really well, it's a pretty good speaker to do that. Um, but I probably, you know, you can use it for playing music through it. Uh, I'm certainly going to do a good job doing that. If you have a preference on the brand, by all means. Uh, if not, if you want to have something that's more... Uh, full range with a flat response to it which is going to play back the way you want it to by all means uh, just buy the TS-312 uh, it'll do probably a better job for just playing backtracks on it so here we have an actual uh, statement pretty much coming from Timber and it has to do in reference to Electro Voices ZLX series speakers that's the 12BT now and the 15BT these guys right here and he's saying you know if Electro Voice basically is saying they're a thousand watt speakers, and when they're really about five hundred watts, because there is a technician out there who's done a video and he's a very smart guy and he reads the chipsets on things and he gets really detailed, and he did uh, make some, a statement that was a little bit sarcastic because you know he saw the amp chip and the amp the one amp chip that he was looking at and working on was five hundred watts, and he said, well, Electro Voice must have just added up the 12 and the 15 to come up with a thousand watts and to be honest i think he's being sarcastic because he's smarter than that um but uh, a lot of things go into deciding what they're going to advertise and market as speakers thing about wattage when it comes to what number they put on a box it's not like the speed limit it's not like they're fudging like you know 60 miles an hour in one car is 60 miles an hour in another car uh what happens is they have you know peak ratings and maximum power and all kinds of stuff and we find from a lot of the bigger companies or companies that are looking at their consumer products that are going to be sold mostly on the internet where they find they have to really talk about the peak number. I'll be honest. I think my version of a dynamic DB rating, which is, you know, real world music play from, you know, 16 feet away. How loud can the speaker go and maintain good quality before it really starts to live in the limits of its, of its volume level? It's probably a more justifiable way to rate the speakers, but I mean, people aren't going to get into that. And DB is not a very high number. And so most manufacturers tend to shy away from it. They do put it in the specs and they do talk about it and they do have a way to come up with a real high number, even though it's probably not even true at that level. But again, it's a marketing thing. Is the ZLX a loud speaker? Absolutely. Very loud speaker. Um, as you spend more money, you'll notice that the first thing that happens is where their first model in the lineup, ZLX, is 1,000 watts. The next model in the Electro Voice lineup also says $1,000, and it pretty much almost costs twice as much. And then it goes up a little bit more than that uh, for wattage. But uh, amazingly enough, they stop calling it peak, and then they go to, a, I guess, an RMS rating, uh, and they, they that's the first thing that happens. But that being said, we can talk about how many watts there are in speakers all day long, especially when it comes to uh, you know, products that are, are just in, in the entry level of that particular brand. So JBL does the same thing, Electro Voice, Alto, they all do. And there's the Mackie, these companies go on and on, and they all have this competing price point that they're all working at, and they're all competing with the wattage because that's the first thing people see when they actually read the description. All right. Well, I hope that helped. I mean, that's, that's like I said, that's a big conversation all on its own. So I have a question from John, and it has to do about plugging guitar uh, into a particular mixer. This just happens to be the PMXU43BT that he asked the question on. Uh, and he's asking, you know, can't plug his guitar in without a DI box. Technically speaking, you can plug your guitar in there, almost any mixer. The problem is going to be the impedance is going to be off. So the acoustic frequency, the, the quality of the sound is definitely not going to be there. Uh, your gains either going to have to be too high or too low, depending on how the mixers are built. Some mixers have pad buttons on it, which will jump that a bit and it'll compensate for like 80% of it. But if we don't fix the impedance, which is what a high Z button does, a guitar button, 
uh, then you're really not taking care of it. Now, when you use a DI box, a DI box is a box that lets you plug your guitar in. So instead of your guitar going straight from the guitar to your guitar amp, your guitar would go into a DI box. And then the DI box has the option on it to go to, of course, your guitar amp, because that's where you probably want to plug it into. It also gives you a standard mic or line output, which is going to let you go straight into a mixing board with no problems. Uh, that's beneficial for two reasons. Uh, one, it allows you to adjust the volume on your guitar amp separately from what the guy on the mixer is going to be receiving. So that's constant for the mixer. Uh, but it's also going to get all the impedance and the line levels just right as an input for that channel and get you the best quality possible. Now, a lot of people do like micing their amps and all that kind of stuff. That's a whole nother story for another day. It doesn't make one worse than the other, but if you don't have a high Z on a mixing board, then it's definitely worth spending the $20 to get that little electronic box that's going to do it for you, which you're basically just buying a high Z as a standalone. So here's the back of an actual party speaker. Now, party speakers, any consumer speaker that you buy for yourself, for your friends, for your family, you're doing it for fun, you're doing it for free, you want something nice and loud. And this is the back side of it. And people do use it for conference rooms and all kinds of stuff, but normally you're not going to have it for a heavy commercial use. The question is, can, how would I hook these speakers up to a subwoofer if it's possible? And the answer is for nine times out of 10, no problem at all. Any subwoofer will do. So it can be done to any speaker as long as it has a preamp output. So again, like I was saying, RCA, XLR, quarter inch. If it's quarter inch, probably better off to make sure it's an unbalanced connection and you can convert that back into whatever form on the subwoofer it needs. So I can go quarter inch to XLR, like maybe I'm going quarter inch to RCA, depending on the subwoofer, but you can do that. And then that allow you to have a powered subwoofer down below. Remember, it's gotta be a powered subwoofer and you'll be able to hook those two up together. For most cases, the speaker will then control the volume of the subwoofer. You'll set that to whatever full base that you want out of it, 60, 70, 80%. And then as you turn up and down the actual speaker on top, it'll work for you no problem. Next question's from Lionel and he's asking, where can he plug in a monitor when he's dealing with the mixer called the Alto Live 1202? And that's a good question, it's pretty straightforward. If you look for the aux, so a monitor allows you to choose your own, what you wanna to listen to off the mixer. And that's gonna be on the AUX, the aux outputs. Now, if you notice that the first aux output also has MON next to it, find that actual quarter inch plug up on the top of the board be on the top right hand side and it also says aux and it's a aux one most probably on the 1202 and uh, so on the aux one it'll say mon next to it that's your monitor output that's where the same plug your monitor into there then across the board any of the aux ones that you turn up you're going to hear that come out of your monitor and that's pretty generic and sometimes it doesn't say mon and doesn't matter what brand model uh, the mixer can be. Uh, if it has AUX, it's going to have an output. It may be called send, it may be called AUX, and it may even be called monitor. But it's a very generic feature for good mixers. Can you hook up 250 ohm? These are the really high end big headphones. 250 ohms headphones to, in this case, the Studio 26C audio interface. Now, I'm going to say pretty much all audio interfaces and all mixers can tolerate a 250 ohm set of headphones on it and they'll do it and they'll tend to do it pretty well i mean um, they tend to have a lot more power to drive their actual system so there's a lot of preamp capability on the headphone output now this is the part that you can run into a problem with though if you're going to dj or have a high level of volume coming into the system and you're going to try and compensate with volume into the headphones you're definitely going to start to hear a lot more hissing and background noise. I would probably, if you need to make sure you maintain the best quality sound, because you are pushing the preamps in these actual uh, mixers and audio interfaces when you plug in those headphones, uh, you probably want to get yourself a standalone uh, headphone amplifier for those headphones. They'll sound better because they'll, they'll sound great all off the bat, but they'll sound better if you do that and you're going to reduce the background hiss. So remember, if you're just going to have a little bit of volume on it, you won't tell the difference. But as you start turning up the volume 40, 50, 60, 70% on the actual headphone knob, you're definitely going to start hearing it. And the problem is you're not going to know if that hissing is on your recording side or just on your playback side. So to play it safe, invest in a small headphone amplifier. 
and your problem will go away. Well, I certainly hope that helps. And that's going to wrap up today's actual video for Q and A's. Remember, we do have a new channel where we're throwing all our reviews on and that's Robin's testing studio. That's also our channel name on Amazon for the videos that you see at the bottom of the product pages. By all means, use the Amazon links. That's how we support this channel. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. We've got a new one coming up soon. See you on that one. Thanks for watching.